10 Captivating Quotes, Unraveling the Current State of Affairs and What Lies Ahead Each of these points is vehemently contested by mainstream science and institutions. Not because they are untrue, but rather because they prefer to keep you in the dark. Because once you become aware, you can alter the course of your personal experience, gaining immense power while dismantling the control they once had over you. These are the 10 wake-up calls and calls to action for the times ahead. One thing is certain, the sense of urgency is escalating, seeping through every level of consciousness, even among those unaware. For those willing to see, the signs are crystal clear and consistently highlighted. The end is near. Personally, there are still a few dots to connect for me to fully comprehend the essence. Why, in what precise form, have I manifested? Supposedly, I'm dead, living in a realm of the deceased, but how exactly does that work? What's the reason behind my death, and how does life function at that point? And what about consciousness? These profound questions lead to a series of enlightening breakthroughs and insights. I'm grateful that, despite thinking I know so much, there's still so much to discover. A crash course in awakening is needed due to the urgency. Here are the 10 crucial points to better understand the context of life. Consider these seriously every time you encounter messages or information from the realms I'm about to describe. 1. Everything is a scam, a deception, a forgery. A distortion. 2. Everything on mainstream television or in the major, alternative, media is a psychological operation, partially or entirely staged. Tailored to the regional audience and aligned with national reporting, it's pure mind control manipulation. 3. Our history is scripted by the victors, a set of agreed-upon lies. The most recent being the entire World War II narrative, actually won by the Nazis. Post-victory changes include the creation of international security services like the CIA, Mossad, and NASA. 4. The global population is manipulated and managed entirely by media, politics, and educational institutions shaped by these international intelligence services. Trusting what you hear in mass media is nearly impossible. 5. Delving into it reveals a satanic elite steering the major industries globally, hidden behind secret organizations and fraternities skilled in withholding information to deceive the public. 6. Every word in every book for modern society, in every university, is designed to mislead us, keeping us manageable and under control through ignorance. This transitioned from centuries of religious texts, with the Vatican creating modern science. 7. Suppressed scientific facts by this intelligence operation, we, as humanity, exist on the water surface within the Earth. The globe Earth concept and the rotating ball universe are both fabrications. Our model proposes an imploded monopole Earth, akin to living in a black hole. 8. The consciousness you identify with, experiencing the physical world, is the true source of all material manifestation. You, as the essence, are a tiny part of the whole, referred to as God Consciousness. The world is a spiritual creation, not a physical place. 9. You are a child of light with a purpose and role. 10. The purpose of life is to become aware of your true, immortal state of being. In this transformative or end phase, as the world undergoes apparent apocalyptic scenarios, the truth is harsh, and they will despise you for it. But at least you can say you knew, at least you can say you lived. A higher power, a battle between good and evil. Throughout the centuries and millennia, different peoples have had their own unique designations for this concept. In India, for example, there were dozens, if not hundreds, of gods representing these supernatural attributes. Across the rest of the world, countless beliefs and convictions also address or propose something similar. The major religions are well known to us, namely Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, often referred to as the Abrahamic religions. Approximately 75% of the world's population is convinced of a higher reality or power, let's call it God. They all refer to the same elusive essence that is God or creation. In their awe of creation, 
they are particularly steadfast in their self-created beliefs and dogmas. This has been the case for centuries and is, naturally, the source of almost all wars in the past. At least, that's the mainstream narrative that is presented or imposed on us. The truth is that we are indeed living in a time of deception, a realization I've had since I started questioning and looking at things with clear eyes. Consider this, there's so much in our lives, in our reality, in our society that simply doesn't add up at its core. There's genuinely a malevolent hidden hand pulling the strings. Whether it's merely a physical devilish influence or genuinely driven by a supernatural devilish force, its existence cannot be denied. I'm not inherently religious or the like. I used to have a certain aversion to faith, the devil, Christianity, or any religious talk. However, gradually, as I accumulated more knowledge in my endless quest for the truth, I found myself arriving at this conclusion more and more often. It slowly became a belief or the beginning of a conviction. I began to realize that this might describe a genuine reality. These things exist. It's also fascinating to note that so many people, for example, do not believe in such supernatural occurrences as I am describing but are fully open to the existence of mythological extraterrestrial beings from an even more mythological space. Entities that are just as elusive, unseen, unprovable, and who knows what else. Let's not reject or take each other less seriously because of our own viewpoints and instead be fully open to the information that the other person brings. The other side of a story or a completely different perspective on the matter. One of the more beautiful statements I've come across in my recent literary studies is that the wise mainly remain silent when others speak, precisely to grasp the wisdom of others. It's quite normal, meaningful, and beautiful. I found it striking that these ancient sages can genuinely listen, without anger, to what young children can tell them. This is because, as I've personally experienced, children are still in direct and clear connection with their higher consciousness. And that is what we call God today. This doesn't mean that you and I are God, but it does mean that you and I can communicate with God. However, we must be aware that the answer he gives is also interpreted by ourselves. God communicates through an invisible feeling, in an audioless message. You hear the words, so to speak, in your mind, but they are not actual physical words as in audio or speech. Each person interprets these feelings based on their own faculties, clarity, or understanding. God speaks all languages, even that of babies, as he communicates without language to everyone. And that is truly incredibly special. Because, once again, I used to fantasize about a time machine. If I had built a time machine and, for instance, traveled to the future and encountered myself, the first thing I would always ask is whether the spiritual awakening had already occurred. Since I hadn't experienced it in my young life but had read about it. When I was in high school, in the first or second year, this concept of a spiritual awakening came into my awareness. It resonated with me, even though I didn't fully understand what exactly was meant by it. But it was clear to me that there could be an enlightenment of consciousness achievable in a person's life. And, for example, in Eastern countries, this was a pursuit, with much knowledge to be gained in such practices. I found all the stories in that genre from various directions of science, philosophy, and the like to be extremely interesting. So, I fantasized and waited for the spiritual awakening for many years, perhaps. When I was deeply into my alien phase, I became familiar with the concept of the new age or a new era in which we all simultaneously experience such spiritual enlightenment. And that still resonated much more with me, aligning perfectly with my alien belief, allowing me to continue fantasizing for a few more years but I am always searching for a deeper and truly tangible truth. The senses need to be stimulated for this, so it cannot remain without any tangible evidence and merely an intriguing story. And so, I encountered the limits of this belief, or conviction, concerning aliens. We were, after all, confined to this planet in the universe. Impossible to escape and under the hypnosis of an ancient intergalactic kingdom. Additionally, 
I was aware that consciousness can exist independently of the body and create the physical world. That we were still enclosed in this extraterrestrial construction, maintaining a reincarnation cycle for many thousands of years. That was my firm belief, so to speak, and somewhat disappointing, causing my interest in this whole topic to slowly die. However, the quest for truth was far from over, and I continued searching for a new plausible worldview. So, I gradually stumbled upon industrial religious texts and the like, and thus the real truth about the flat earth. Because it was precisely through becoming aware of the global satanic sect pulling the strings and, in addition, being conscious of the religious texts about it, that I became aware that the earth is indeed flat. And this was made entirely clear and explained to me by biblical figures. It's interesting because there are also many devout biblical people who do not believe that the earth is flat. These people tend to think about it just as absurdly as the rest of the indoctrinated population. However, just like the Bible and all other history writers before the year 1800, who apparently were all considered backward, everyone was convinced of a flat earth. That's just the way it is. But we claim to be living in an enlightened era, at least since the Renaissance, which literally means enlightenment. Or are we actually living in a time of slavery and oppression, where as a society, we seem to be regressing. As we come out of schools, where we are supposedly smart enough only to operate machines but kept ignorant enough to avoid asking too many challenging questions. I'm not a hardcore believer in any scripture, but I do like to take things literally as I read them, especially if I understand the context. And so, I can genuinely believe or be convinced of certain things acknowledged in various religions. I also believe that many things were literally described. However, in our modern times, we don't interpret them literally or no longer understand their true meaning. Take, for example, a word like glory or blessedness, which was frequently used in the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. Nowadays, we interpret that as a piece of land or an inheritance. Even a word like vineyard, which we simply interpret as a vineyard, probably has a completely different meaning and has much to do with the natural birth of people. There's a reason for all these phases, and it's not the reason we are told. Just like the construction data are not the right data, just like we, as a modern civilization, did not build these buildings and did not experience this history at all. It speaks of a preceding civilization, a preceding humanity that seemingly disappeared from the face of the earth 200 years ago. In the writings, you could find that as the moment in the end times when Christians or believers are eventually saved and all transported to heaven simultaneously. There have been so many things written and prophesied about this end time, and many predictions have mercilessly fallen apart. Yet, the Bible still proves to be remarkably accurate. Additionally, other writings also speak about this same period in the same context. It indeed mentions Gog and Magog, and it's quite striking that this is specifically linked to us Dutch people genetically or historically. The peculiar idea that we already seem dead and appear to be held in a cavity in a mountain. These ancient predictions and descriptions still stand and seem to resonate somewhat in a creepy way with our current status and the world today, Satan's little season. Forget the indoctrinated image of a red man with a trident, consciousness on earth has only one form, and that is the form you and I have in our bodies. Everyone held as an entity, like Satan and his demons, has the same form but without a body. Essentially, we are all just light beings, although their light is obscured. Consciousness is immortal, so these entities or essences of consciousness have been stuck in this closed construction, which is the earth, for eternity. Long enough and clever enough to collaboratively scheme behind the scenes, outside the consciousness or knowledge of people, forming a plan where humanity is unconsciously influenced and directed. Only in the highest echelons of power and control, some are truly influenced or in actual contact with these interdimensional entities. These things exist, just as your consciousness and my consciousness truly exist, even if they cannot be scientifically grasped or measured. You and I are proof that there is more between heaven and earth. The world around us is evidence that Satan's little season is indeed ongoing, and there is a battle between good and evil. 
This means that when you become aware of this, there is a role for you in this battle between good and evil. Each person will be driven in their own way and will do what will contribute maximally to this collective fight against good and evil. It's important to reflect on what drives you. What does your heart say in this case, and more importantly, what could you do or want to do? Learning to read is a skill. Your skill is the ability to read. And, like any skill, you should use it. Knowledge must be applied and made to work for you. You can read anything. It costs you nothing and gives you so much in return. By reading, you will acquire even more knowledge, and you must use that knowledge, make it work for you. Why read 100 books and do nothing with them? You will become highly motivated to do something about it. If you still have no idea what to do with it, that's okay. You'll only find out once you've read enough and realized it. You don't necessarily have to share your story on the internet, like I do, this is my mission. But if you feel called to do so, go ahead. What's more important is that you will see that you will take on a much more active and better role in your world. This will positively reflect on you. You don't have to actively seek out people to help, but try to help where you can. You don't have to actively look for it. Again, it will come to you, but you may not have noticed it before. Seize these moments every day. Choose one or take advantage of one to respond to and just go along with the flow that your heart suggests, selflessly, and a positive turn will be given to the day that you probably hadn't anticipated. That's the real magic of life when you simply go with the flow of how your heart has laid it all out for you in your daily routine. I have a few tens of euros a week, but I might give away one or two tens of euros in a store if I see someone has almost no money. If I can endure it for one or two days, I would empty my wallet. Not that I actively seek it out. Not that I should want to broadcast it to the world every time it happens. But to inspire you, I want to mention it again. It gives a particularly good feeling when you help people at those moments. Not to pat yourself on the back but just in silence, literally with a good intention to help those people where you can. And you shouldn't expect it, but God will reward you for it because that's just universal law. As you sow, so shall you reap, and things will come to you, falling into place as the grand plan always intended. Live like this for a while, and your life will change in a very positive way. You, as a person, will become much more mature and improve so much. Your environment will be surprised, perhaps pointing fingers, but I think mainly embracing it since we have caused them so much trouble in our little lives as the black sheep. But, in essence, this is the new life. You are completely reborn this way. With your clear mind, you will indeed become increasingly aware of the insane, upside down, completely crazy devilish world in which my life is. And your purpose, motivation, and role in this life will suddenly become clear to you. And this very special course of events begins with simply being open to other ideas than what you're used to fighting against. When you still listen to these other ideas that fall outside your frame of reference, there's a reason why you feel conflicting emotions about them. That has to do with the fact that you don't know how consciousness works. Find out and be liberated because the truth will set you free. And since you create the world around you with the consciousness that you might as well accept, it will suddenly change in the first-hand experience of this magical truth, and life as a whole, as my father would say, your fantasy world, but just like mine, the real world we experience every day. I wish you good luck, as I'm doing just fine here for many years. And we live happily ever after. That would be the true fairy tale ending, but nothing could be further from the truth. Because with the realization of all this miraculous information, you don't live so long and happily, and you are immediately deployed or deployable for the battle to come. Brace yourself, we have not seen anything yet, people, but we will know what our consciousness and we as humans are capable of. Honesty is the best policy. Be sincere, honest, and trust your intuition. Higher consciousness, inspiration, or God in whatever name or form you understand him. He is in you, we are part of him. There is more to our earthly life. And the sooner you become aware of it, 
the faster you will deal with all the devils and dark entities and matters in your life. Liberate yourself from that madness by considering yourself fortunate and making yourself happy with the truth. There is so much more between heaven and earth because you are so much more between heaven and earth.